Ah, fan fiction. This glorious literary genre holds a special place in many of our hearts, whether it's the popularization of the Mary Sue trope, nonsensical crossovers, alternate universes, or the more saucy bits secretly scribbled out in spiral-bound notebooks by hormonal teenagers, fanfic has been around since forever and is a staple of the World Wide Web. Yes, from Star Wars to Star Trek, from Harry Potter to Tenchi Muyo, from My Little Pony to Naruto, not what, whatever. <sighs> Every franchise fandom under the sun has been churning out user-generated storylines and sharing them through the tubes of the internet at a blistering pace. Consider the popular website fanfiction.net currently hosts around 2.7 million such stories, and the list is growing. It seems folks can't get enough of their beloved film, TV, and book characters, and amateur writers have been more than happy to continue these tales on their own terms. Yes, even yours truly donned a dorky pseudonym or two in my younger years and typed out a few Bulma Goku love stories here and there, you probably did it too. It's okay, I'll admit it for the both of us. Plenty of aspiring and even accomplished authors get their start in fan fiction. There's no shame in it. It's a safe community in which you can get hands-on writing experience with the added bonus of relative anonymity. And while we all know that there are some exceptions, most fan fiction writers go into it understanding it's about exposure and a love of the story's characters and universe not making money, because fan fiction is just one of the many things that operates in the internet's legal gray area. It's technically a violation of copyright, but most authors and trademark holders look the other way with the understanding that it's all being made for fun and no one's trying to turn a profit off of someone else's property. But what if that changed? What if you could sell your fan fiction? A bold question, and one that until recently no multi-billion dollar company was willing to ask. But then along came the behemoth. On May 22, 2013, Amazon Publishing launched Kindle Worlds. The purpose of this service is to provide a commercial venue for fanfiction writers, allowing them to publish stories for certain licensed media properties to be sold in the Kindle store. So here's how it works. Once you register, you're provided with a long list of approved worlds, or authorized franchises, and you're then encouraged to write fanfiction for those properties. Put a book together, and after a review period in which they ensure that the story you wrote follows their content guidelines, you're free to sell said work in their store, and they'll split the royalties with you, the percentage of which is determined in part by how long the book is. Setting aside all the immediate legal quandaries that this poses for a moment, it cannot be stated enough just how much of a potential game changer a system like this is. For the first time, fans of a series can try their hand at developing storylines within said series for profit. This has never really been done before, but of course, the system does have its flaws. I've never used it, but I've talked a bit with some authors who have, and the main complaints seem to be the same with everyone. The revenue split is smaller than traditional Kindle publishing, so even if your book takes off, you're likely not going to see a life-changing influx of income. Additionally, the contractual obligations of certain worlds seem a bit predatory. For instance, any original characters you introduce into your story immediately become the property of the franchise. You don't own any of the characters, even if you create them. This goes the same for storylines, too, so there's absolutely nothing keeping the owner of the property from taking a story you wrote and adapting it for another book or TV, or film, or whatever, making tons of money off of your idea, and they don't have to pay you a penny for any of it. They don't even have to credit you if they don't want to. That's a big, gigantic red flag in lots of folks' books, as it should be. There's also, as I understand it, a two-month waiting period before you can see sales analytics, which can be incredibly frustrating, especially considering Kindle Direct Publishing, the original story publishing platform, offers those figures in real time. I'm sure this waiting period for fanfiction entries isn't a coincidence, and I'm told that, if anything, it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth if you're a frequent user of the platform. It's also limited to US customers only, and the fanfiction you publish is limited to the Kindle store. You agree that the book you write will remain there exclusively forever. Forever. 
You can't put copies elsewhere online, you can't sell it through a third-party service, and you can't adapt it to other formats. Since they own the rights to everything you write, you're essentially turning over all assets to them with the understanding that it will live, breathe, and die on their platform and under their terms and their terms only. Authors I know who have used the service also made it a point to let me know that in terms of marketing your published fanfiction, you get no help whatsoever. They won't promote your book, they won't suggest it to customers for you, and the creator of the world that you're writing for is under no obligation to even acknowledge your existence, so unless you've already built up a solid fan base elsewhere, it is incredibly hard to get your name seen on the platform. But above all, the greatest, I mean the greatest drawback to Kindle worlds for most folks, the properties you're allowed to write for aren't really that good. So here's a list of all the available worlds on the platform. Most of them you'll notice are relatively unknown. With the exception of G.I. Joe, Vampire Diaries, and a few others my wife recognized. Apart from these, and maybe these, the rest of these worlds are, to put it as kindly as I can, not very popular? Like, has anyone on Earth ever even heard of this? Seriously. How about this? I mean, I scroll through these and I feel like they're a bunch of fake movie posters that you'd plaster on the wall if you were setting up a front for the mob and for some reason you needed to stay within the realm of public domain. I mean, seriously, what what is this? I mean, this can't be a real series, right? Ah, what do I know? Now, don't get me wrong, it's not all bad. If fan fiction is your passion and you're a fan of those properties, then there's obviously good news to be had. For one, one of the biggest benefits to fan fiction is that you already have an established reader base to write for. It's tough starting your own original property, believe me, and something like Kindle Worlds will give amateur authors access to a fan base that they wouldn't otherwise have. If you're smart, then, like many successful Kindle Worlds writers, you can use an awesome piece of fan fiction to introduce lots of readers to your own original work. If you've got three or four titles that haven't gotten much attention lately, just drop a slick Veronica Mars novella onto Kindle Worlds, and if it's good, it won't take too long for Veronicans, or whatever they're called, I don't know, to go hunting through your backlog for more, and many of them will start taking a look at your original stuff. An additional tip, while the quality options are sparse, there are plenty of different genres represented on the platform, so writers of various categories can use a similar property to their original work in an effort to win new readers. So if you've got an original special ops action novel that no one's reading, try writing a G.I. Joe one-shot to grab a few of those fans. If you've got a post-apocalyptic story, try writing in the Silo Saga world. If you've got a quirky small town mystery, try Wayward Pines. Or if you like writing stories about adults who have the maturity of middle schoolers, try Gossip Girl, or whatever this thing is. The point is there are benefits to this system. If you were going to write fan fiction for these properties anyway, you might as well make some cash off of it at the same time, right? But I guess that's the big conundrum. Things like Kindle Worlds have the potential to completely revolutionize fan fiction itself, but it might just be a bit ahead of its time. This platform only works if the properties it offers are worth writing for. See, while there are plenty of drawbacks to be found in this system, it should be that the opportunity to play in these universes is just too good of a deal to pass up. After all, fanfiction is fan-driven, and the whole point is that fans of these properties will love them so much that they'll overlook all the hassle and the potential unfair treatment just so they could say they published a story about the characters and world that they love. So why has and Amazon, the biggest company in the universe, put more effort into acquiring worthwhile properties for fanfiction writers to play in. I don't know, ask this guy. While the system seems a bit too exploitative for my taste, you can be sure that if a property I was, you know, actually a fan of turned up on this list, I'd deal with all the downsides just to try it out. As of yet, though, that hasn't happened. But hey, if there's a world they offer that you've been a lifelong fan of, then I'd say go for it but temper your expectations. Who knows, maybe in a few years Amazon will buy out Toei Animation and my old Goku, Bulma, Krillin, Forbidden Love Triangle angst epic will resurface and net me a nice paycheck in the process. Videos like this are brought to you in part by my supporters on Patreon. So subscribe to my channel today and consider supporting me on there too, if you care. Thank you.